Det kom en väldigt heavy night last night apparently. Och vi såg det. Har funnit så här och nu har du chansen mot en av dina barndomsidoler igen. Ni har ju mötts tre gånger på ATP toren. Du var ofin nog att, att vinna samtliga tre då. Hur tänker du när det gäller ikväll? Ja, nej, men precis som du säger det Både Stefan och Mats du, kanske, och Björn naturligtvis är anledningen till att man, att man börjar spela tennis. Så att, eh, det är nära för mig varje gång att få, att få spela med Stefan om det är träning Stefan, eller om det är match eller spela tillsammans med en Davis Cup. Så att det är nära så att det ska bli jätte, jättekul well, att spela med honom ikväll också. Till med Stockholm har du gjort det för. Ja, vi har mött i Stockholm Open också. Så att, eh, får vi mötas i Kings och tennis Finding, också. Så att, eh, jag ser verkligen fram emot det. Hur laddade du? Jätteladdad. Lycka till. Tackar. Thomas Ekvist. Han är verkligen upp för den här. That's going to be an amazing match, that's for sure. Och Stefan, I know he's going to be up for it. De här förlusterna mot Thomas i slutet av din ordinarie karriär så att säga 95-96. Vad minst av dem? De glömmer man. Och så går man vidare. <laughs> Just asked, uh, det är precis vad jag gjorde. Och nu är det en ny dag. En ny kväll, en ny chans. Chans. Nu är det en ny match idag, och, men fantastiskt kul att vara i final igen. Det hade väl i alla fall, det var målsättningen den här Vi veckan att försöka ta mig till final igen. Och finaler är alltid härliga att spela. Härligt tid att spela i den här fantastiska arenan här. Så att se fram emot dagen. Men det gäller att kross igår av Willander, 6-1-6-1. Han skyllde på att du har tjuträdat med Roger Federer. Jag vet inte om du har ringt honom nu under dagen, men Enqvist har ju faktiskt plusstatistik även på Federer, så det är inte så mycket till hjälp om du har ringt. Nej, det är ju inte det. Jag får lita på mig själv idag. Och hur långt det räcker, det vet vi inte ännu. I fjol var det John McEnroe som stod på andra sidan nätet i finalen. Nu är det Thomas Enqvist. Det skiljer en del, va? Det skiljer en del, va? Ja, det gör det. Den ena spelar med vänster och den andra med höger. Och... Det är inte Roger Federer. Ja, det det. <laughs> Och för övrigt så, nej men det ska bli kul här då. Thomas, han, han har visat verkligen fin tennis den här veckan och uh, jag tror Thomas vi båda hoppas på att det ska bli en bra och välspelad final här då. så att jag I'm tror att båda har målsättningen att uh, det ska bli bra här well ikväll. Throughout. Om du drar till med en procentsats, vilken chans ger du dig själv? Uh, ja, rent teoretiskt sett är det 50-50 men jag skulle säga att... Uh, med tanke på att jag spelade bra igår så ser jag vissa möjligheter här, men i procenttal det vet jag inte riktigt. Det ska bli riktigt kul att like to say 50-50, but uh, he's not Allez. sure, though he did play very well yesterday. And I have to agree, uh, I watched him yesterday, I had the special commentating on uh, Ed Berg. He was in extremely high form, he looked so mobile for a man his age. The last time they met was in 1996, as you mentioned, Mike. And later that year, of course, Edberg finally called it a day. And these players coming into the final with immaculate records, don't forget. So certainly worthy finalists. Stefan Edberg, 48 years of age, born in Västervik in Sweden. Right-hander, of course, turned pro in 1983. In 1996, 42 ATP singles titles to his name, six Grand Slams among them, 18 doubles titles, three Grand Slams. That's a career in itself. And prize money, remember, this is back in those days, 20.6 million US dollars. Also uh, grabbed Olympic bronze in both singles and doubles, together with Anders Jarud from uh, Seoul in 1988. He won the uh, gold medal at the uh, 84 Olympics when tennis was a demonstration sport. So he's won just about everything. Certainly one of the best uh, exponents of the serve volley game in the history of the sport. Personifying elegance, often called the gentleman of tennis. Can you think of anyone, Mike, who's uh, more of a gentleman on court than uh, the man in picture? Uh, definitely not. And uh, we've seen throughout the week how good he is. 48 years of age and still looking very, very strong. Here we see his opponent in the final, Thomas Enquist, 40 years of age from right here in Stockholm. In fact, uh, lives a stone's throw away from where we are this evening. Right-handed player turned professional 1991, retired back in 19, nine, oh, 2006, I should say. 19 ATP singles titles for him. No Grand Slams, but of course, uh, very close at the 1999 Australian Open losing uh, in the final to Yevgeny Kafarnikov. I banked some 10.4 million American dollars in prize money. Got as high as number four in the world in 1999. 
Although he didn't win a Grand Slam title, he did win three ATP Masters Series titles. Paris in 1996, where he did defeat uh, Stefan Edberg en route. Also won in Stuttgart 1999 and Cincinnati in 2000. A wonderful player. And, well, Simon, you could say the fourth best to come out of this country. Well, that's always uh, an interesting one, that one. It uh, all depends on how you, how you look at it. Certainly in terms of uh, titles won, uh, 19 ATP singles titles speaks for itself. But he never won a Grand Slam. Certainly, Thomas, you want some. Might uh, have some uh, bidding rights on taking that fourth place, or why not even Robin Serdling? You know, we can't match the number of titles that Ancaster's won. But it's uh, always an interesting one, that one. Also, a former ju junior world number one, Thomas Enquist. The Swedes do come through early. Stefan Edberg, another one, took uh, a clean sweep of all the junior Grand Slam titles in the same season back in. Uh, 1983 seems like an age ago. Is no other player has um, ever achieved that. I was going to say that. No one else has no, ever done that. Alone. What will be interesting is uh, to see just how Two mobile minutes. Edberg is today. Fit as a fiddle. And of course, he did uh, take up squash when he did retire from uh, tennis and was almost as good at that. Reached the uh, elite level at home here in Sweden. So, uh, born with a racket in his hand with Stefan Edberg. Of course, been busy on the courts as well. A lot of uh, court time with the great Roger Federer as well, who is also coaching these days. It's uh, an interesting one, that one. Former top 10 players from Sweden have now turned to coaching on the ATP World Tour. Thomas Enquist himself recently signing on to help uh, Fernando Vadasco. If uh, Enquist accomplishes a fraction of what his uh, compatriots, Magnus Norman and Stefan Edberg, have done with uh, Stanislas Vavrinka and Roger Federer, respectively, it uh, would be quite impressive. I wonder what makes them such uh, great coaches. One thing, uh, being a great player, but not all uh, players make uh, good coaches, and that goes for any sport, really. Well, you look at the tour now and how many of the uh, older players coaching. Of course, you've got Lindell with uh, Andy Murray, Magnus Norman with uh, Varenka, like you said, Boris Becker with uh, Djokovic this year, Michael Chang with Kaina Shikori, and of course, as mentioned, uh, Edberg with uh, Federer, and uh, he was saying earlier he's hoping that Federer will be watching this. See, you find it interesting, I read somewhere that poor Stefan is going to have to look for a stream to follow Rogers' match. Of course, he'll be in action tomorrow in the semi-finals at the BNP Paribas Open over there in Indian Wells at Masters 1000 event. He'll be taking on Alexander Dogopoulos in the semi-final. We'll be in action this evening, in fact. He'll be taking, uh, or taking to the court in the doubles. doubles. That's right. Oh, interesting. Chance for a double if uh, Edberg uh, can do the business here That's against Dan Christ. And Roger Federer can do likewise in Indian Wells. And a pair of them have a double. Beautiful play down the line from Edberg, hitting the mark straight away. Close. <laughs> <laughs> no Hawkeye in use. Of course, both of these men coming into this match are unbeaten. Two matches under their belt. And for Enquist, looking to do the trifecta, looking for three wins over former world number ones. Started on Tuesday with a victory over Marcelo Rios of Chile. 6-3, 6-3. Oh. And on Wednesday, oh, defeated uh, Carlos Moyo, we saw in action earlier this evening. Beat him again in straight sets, 6-3, 7-6. Had a day off yesterday. But he's under pressure here in his opening service game. That's right, uh, Edberg. There, though. I almost say that uh, Edberg had a day off yesterday, the way he uh, put Mats Verlander to the sword, 6-1, 6-1. 
Is both of these players in different pools or different groups. Edberg in group one. Hangfest in group two. Groups uh, set us up for the battle of the generations. That first group containing Edberg, Villander and Leconte. Playing back in the 80s. Group B, Carlos Moya, Marcelo Rios and Thomas Enquist. A decade later, there or thereabouts. And three points in a row here from Enquist. And the love 40. Juice. Into juice. Opening service game of this first set. A lot more hair than uh, I remember him having back in the day. Thomas Enquist. What are you going to talk about Edberg there? Advantage Enquist. A lot more serious this match, isn't it? Than that match earlier. I don't think we'll see the uh, comedy and the histrionics from the first match repeated here. Dragging rights at stake, of course, between two Swedes. Juice. Yes. Anquist was the tournament director for Kings of Tennis. Janquist uh, taking over that role. That's very uh, loose. Uh, tracking on that forehand side. Fourth break point in this opening service game on well, Stefan Edberg. See on Edberg's face, this uh, means business. This is serious stuff. Didn't quite get there. Already blowing hard. Juice. Well, this is a sign of things to come. You could be here all night. Quite a match. That's one of the toughest things to accept in any sport. When you read the game still, your mind is still as quick. And your body's slowing down, and you don't get there. So frustrating. Uh, Second double fault on a uh, set on a set point game point. Uh, History serve there from Enquist. Actually strange for him, of course. Maybe one of his idols. Finally, he's able to get over the line. Our first service game taking an eternity here. Okay. It's a taste of things to come. We'll be in for an extremely long evening. Saving four break points in his opening service game there, Enquist. Saying Enquist took over the coaching responsibilities for Spaniard. Fernando Vadesco, sorry, up until uh, Roland Garros. I'll take care of him during the play season and then uh, reappraise. Oh. 
long 15. Too much that Burke can do about that one. You never get tired of seeing that uh, trademark service style of Ed Burke. I like that little kinky with his, with his head. <laughs> I don't know what he does, but you watch his service action. It's a little tick. Cut away. 15, 30. Of course, his uh, service motion is the, uh, the logo for the Australian Open. If you didn't know that, that's a good piece of information to yeah. know. Classic. Did you know that one? Nice movement into the net this time. 15, Such a distinctive serving action. He's never a powerful server. He did uh, win so many points thanks to his spin, especially that uh, kicker that he has on the second serve. I had. So an early break. Back to back games it is uh, for. Thomas Enqvist to get things started here in the opening set. A solid start for the 40-year-old. Certainly loves playing here in Stockholm, doesn't he? Extremely aggressive there. That's an opening service game of Edberg's. 15 Wallops down another race. He's actually won three titles here in Stockholm in his ATP career. Three at the uh, Stockholm Open. Venue that is about what? What would you say? Ten minute drive from where we are this evening. There or thereabouts. Last of those 13. titles in 1999 in an old Swedish final, defeating Magnus Gustafsson. Certainly loves playing on home soil. That's for sure. Fourteen loves. So working well now for Anquist. So frustrating for Ed Burke. Not get anything on it at the moment. Ooh. You got something on that. that. <laughs> this certainly did. Such a beautiful 14, city. 15. Stockholm often uh, called the Venice of the North. So much water. What an angle that is. So he confirms the break, and what a start this is. He leads by three games to love here in the opening set. He leads three games to love. A great turnout here inside the Stockholm Waterfront Congress Centre. Love their tennis, although they haven't had too much to shout about of late. Tough times for Swedish tennis after enjoying so much success during the Borg era and the generation that followed. Sweden's highest ranked men's singles player now is Marcus Eriksson, sitting in a lowly 361st place, would you believe? Well, it is a sad state, it must be said. And, uh, when you Love think between 1974 and 1992, Swedish players won 24 of the 76 Grand Slam events, which is absolutely incredible. A Swedish player won at least one major title in all but two of those years. And of course, they won the Davis Cup on four occasions as well in that time frame. Incredible dominance. Unprecedented. 
like you say now, the Swedish Love number one with Robin Söderling, of course, still out. Marcus Eriksson, 361. Their number two player, Christian Lindahl, 505. Now the Swedish number three is 604 in the world. So it's uh, certainly worrying time. They have one young fellow coming through, Elias Yima, 17-year-old. Uh, looks as though he might have the goods out of that uh, good to great academy. Imagine the pressure on that young man's shoulders. Oh, that must be horrible. Love following the expectations of a, a nation on his shoulders, knowing what's uh, gone before him. Again, another break point. Thing is, during these guys' days, or at least Edberg's days, they turned away top ten players yeah, in the Davis yeah, yeah. Cup. That's, a, that's the strength in depth that they had. There's another break. What a start this is from Thomas Engfest. Four games to love. Thank you. In return on a decent serve from Edberg. He knows how to celebrate his birthday, doesn't he? It was 12 months ago. Edberg was in this same match, corresponding match. He's our defending champion. The wall at the moment. Fifteen on. Did things pretty comfortably as well in that final last year, beating the uh, one and only Jay Mac, John McEnroe, Johnny Mac. Change of angle. Up class. It's waited this time. Saw the opportunity and the uh, placement. Thin point. Another cracker. A full stretch there. Those had enough. 15, but Anquist's birthday celebrations, I think. It's going to spoil the party now by the look of things. Thirty-four. Now saved to four break points. Back to five break points, I should say. Four break points in his opening service game. Across. It's too long. That's for service. What a serve. There's plenty of sting. Uh, not such a good serve. Just didn't get there. Gets himself out of trouble once again, does Thomas Engfest. Again, saving break points two in that two service long. game. And he's now one game away.
in the final of the 2014 Kings of Tennis. Thomas Enqvist, five games to love. Broken the serve of Enqvist, of Edberg, I should say, on two occasions. And a big service game coming up for our defending champion. 28-year-old. Living to keep this first set alive. Continues to read that serve like a book. And that's what we used to see. Serve volley master himself in action. 15 on. He's putting that serve out wide. Uncomfortable coming into the close quarter range. shot there. There he is, his element at the net, Edberg. So comfortable there. Yeah, second time in this service game. Yeah. Recognise that net rush. 14, and his own game now. So hard to counter it as well when he's putting that serve out wide. Just need to be on the money on that return. Game oh, that one. <laughs> it's taking a little bit of time, but he's finally got his first uh, game on the board. It's a, a stay of execution in this first set, but uh, avoids the bagel anyway. It's never nice to be bageled in a final. Introduce the juice there. And Chris finding the net. Really patience this time, a lot of central hitting. 15 on. Serve again. Now for his uh, baseline hitting back in the day. Thomas and Christ, laser like precision. Hit that one. And it was destined to land. Thomas Enquist. 15, That's Larson. These two players very well, of course. One of the tennis family in Sweden. Played a little bit of doubles actually prior to this uh, final getting underway. Depth on that uh, an ultimate Fourteen. backhand. A rally of patience is going the way of uh, Stefan Edberg here. The longer rally is tending to suit the 48 year old. Wily old fox. Again, two break points. And this time he catches in. Describe that so well, Edberg. First of it now in this first set.
that. Getting a bit of a fight back here in the latter stages. The who's who of uh, Stockholm here this evening. The place to be on this uh, Friday evening. All dressed up and somewhere to go. I'm sure Sturaplan, the party district, will be uh, going strong this evening. It's starting to rain outside. I promised snow at the weekend. Bit of a roll at the moment, two games in a row. Again, serving to keep this first set alive. Oh! 30, Interesting. 30. Earlier in his career, Emberg was seen as a, a bit of a bottler. Um, until he was picked up by Tony Pickard, who worked with him until uh, the end of 1994. Helped him eliminate that uh, tendency to fold when things were going against him. The condition that uh, Tony Pickard referred to as the droops. Droops. Be a fighter later on in his career. Delicate little touch. Nice awareness. Just summed up the situation, really, there, Enquist. Dang, well disguised. 40, 30. All the world like he was going to go across court. Mistaken, but isn't Edberg using one of Federer's rackets? Have to have a look at that. I'm not sure that's the same racket as Federer using. Could be wrong. Well, too many unforced errors in this uh, service game, and all of a sudden it is a set point for Mr. Thomas Enquist. They probably can't afford his own rackets. And he earned 20.6 million during his career. Juice. <laughs> Point. Man from Stockholm. Yes. What a serve that is. With that spin. Unplayable. That's the receiver. You've got to stand on the right side. That's the only way you're going to return that one. My smile on that anchor's face. Early return there. 
The younger man. Is it a case of third time lucky? Cheeky little dink over the net, didn't come off. So it's uh, Thomas Enquist who takes out the first set. Not without a fight though. It was in action earlier this evening and of course this is our second stop on the 2014 second ATP turn. Champions Tour. To Very true, they've already been to uh, Las Vegas, Delray Beach, Still moves on to Edinburgh, oh. Scotland, Lockerheist in uh, Belgium, then they're off to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil and then finally of course the big showcase Finale in London. Oh, it certainly is a, a wonderful TV tour, on. isn't it? Uh, of course, to be eligible to play in this, you must be over 35 years of age. Or have retired from the ATP World Tour for at least uh, two years. And of course, each player has either been a world number one, a Grand Slam finalist, or a singles player in a winning Savers Cup team. do get the uh, luxury of picking two players of their choice to take wild cards. Finding the spot. No well, wild cards this year, is it? All of them qualify. Yeah, all of them qualify. True enough. It becomes more relevant, I would imagine, in... Uh, Edinburgh, perhaps Knocker Heist. Too many male Belgian players to mention that have reached the heights. Speaking of Edinburgh, Thomas Enkvest will go into that tournament as the, the defending champion. As Edberg is here, okay. the defending okay. champion who's in trouble at the moment. First game, second set. Again, Enkvist. 